Chapter 12 The sun had gone down, leaving the uneven line of two-leg rooftops outlined against a scarlet sky. Stick clambered up a pile of two-leg waste, pushing aside pieces of debris, his nose twitching. Last time he'd been here, the pile had been teeming with rats. Now all he could find were stale scents and droppings. Not a whisker, Cora spat, looking down at him from the top of the heap. Some other cats must have cleaned the place out already. Dodge, Stick hissed. We can't be sure of that, Cora pointed out. There are other cats living here. Any of them could have taken the rats. I know it's Dodge, Stick growled. He doesn't want us living here, so he's trying to starve us. He jumped down from the mound, swiping bad-temperedly at an empty two-leg box as he landed, and stalked away. Before he had taken more than three paw steps, he glimpsed a flash of orange out of the corner of his eye. Spinning around, he saw Red sitting in the shadow of a wall. Where have you been? Red's neck fur fluffed up. Around. Well, stay close by in future, the flame-colored she-cat sprang to her paws. Why? She challenged. I can look after myself. There are some dangerous cats around, Stick growled. To his surprise, Red bounded forward and pushed her forehead against his shoulder with an affectionate purr. More dangerous than you? She meowed, looking up. Her eyes were glimmering with amusement. Surely not. For a moment, Stick wanted to cover her ears with licks, as he used to when she was a kit. But those days were long gone. When he didn't say anything, he saw the amusement fade from Red's eyes. I'm going to see how Percy's getting on, she mewed, turning and stalking across the patch of waste ground. Stick watched her go, sadness twisting in his belly. You won't tame that one so easily, Stick jumped as he realized that Cole had padded up behind him. I don't want to tame her, he responded gruffly. I want to keep her safe. She's old enough to keep herself safe, Cole pointed out. She needs a mother. Cole touched his tail tip briefly to his friend's shoulder. You've done the best you could. But it's not enough, is it? Stick replied. It won't ever be enough. Stick padded across the waste ground in the opposite direction from the one Red had taken. At the edge of the open space, he leaped onto the fence and began walking along the top, balancing easily. The two leg gardens were deserted in the gathering night. Though light showed in some of the dens, the shadows lay thickly where Stick prowled. Stick's whiskers quivered, and he opened his jaws to taste the air. Rabbit. His belly rumbled and water flooded his jaws, but he knew that this scent came from a rabbit in a two-leg cage. I'd be in more trouble than it's worth if I tried to catch it. As Stick padded along the fence top, the smell grew stronger. A new taint mingled with it, the scent of fear. Stick wondered if young two-legs were trying to play with the rabbit again. He knew that the rabbit didn't like it. Then a terrified shriek rose from the garden just ahead. Stick froze. This wasn't because of clumsy young two legs. The rabbit was being hunted. Stick bounded along the fence top until he came to the garden where the rabbit lived. Halting in the shade of a holly tree, he looked down at the shiny mesh cage in the middle of the smooth green grass. The black and white rabbit crouched close to the ground while Misha and Skipper circled the cage. Their pelts bristled and their teeth were bared in a snarl. On the far side of the grass, the two-leg nest was dark and silent. Stop it, Stick called out. That rabbit isn't prey. Misha and Skipper halted and stared up at him. Oh, really? Misha sneered. You'd hunt it fast enough if you weren't scared of the two legs. I'm not scared, Stick growled. Prove it, Skipper challenged. Help us catch this rabbit. No, Stick began to back away along the fence. No good will come of this. But before he could leave, Skipper ran at the cage and rocked it upward with one massive shoulder. The rabbit shrieked again and shrank back into the corner farthest from the gap. Misha pressed herself to the ground and reached under the cage with one paw to drag the creature into the open. The rabbit crouched on the grass, trembling, as first Misha, then Skipper darted at it, lashing out with their paws to rip its ears. Tufts of black and white fur drifted over the grass, and Stick spotted a dark stain beginning to spread on the rabbit's shoulder. Kill it cleanly at least, he growled. Misha looked up at him, her cream-colored pelt pale in the gathering darkness. Make us, 
she turned back to the terrified rabbit, motioning Skipper to stand aside. The rabbit tried to run. Misha let it cover a few tail lengths before pouncing on it again and cuffing it around the head. The rabbit let out a long, high-pitched wail and struggled as both cats returned to the attack. Its powerful fear scent flooded over Stick, and his belly growled with hunger. He slid his claws in and out, scoring the wooden fence. All his instincts were telling him to leap down and join in, to claim his share of the prey. But he knew what the result would be. We can't afford to make enemies of the two legs. Finally, the rabbit collapsed, limp with shock, its chest heaving with fast, panting breaths. Stick couldn't bear to watch any longer. Leaping down from the fence, he raced across the grass and shouldered Skipper away from the quivering creature. What do you think you're doing? The ginger and white Tom demanded. I'm going to put the poor thing out of its misery, Stick snarled. Don't think you get to share, Misha spat. This is our prey. Ignoring her, Stick lifted one paw to deliver a killing blow. At the same moment, Skipper and Misha both threw their heads back and let out blood-curdling yowls. A window in the two-leg nest lit up. Yellow light flooded over the grass. The door of the nest crashed open, and loud two-leg voices came from inside. Stick glanced around. Misha and Skipper had vanished, leaving him alone in the middle of the lighted patch of grass, crouched over the shivering rabbit. The two-leg yowling grew louder. A huge male two-leg appeared in the doorway, brandishing a bristly wooden pole. His mate and two two-leg kits followed him out, wailing as he charged at Stick. The rabbit scrambled to its paws and took off. Stick spun around and fled for the fence. Something sailed over his head and crashed into the bushes a tail length away. Without looking back, he scrambled to the top of the fence and ran along it, past the waste ground and down into the alley. The two-leg yowling died away behind him. Stick stood still, his heart thumping. He shivered at the thought of the two-leg stick landing across his back, cracking his spine. We keep our heads down around two legs, and now this happens. Enjoy your fresh kill, loser! Stick spun around as he recognized Skipper's voice. He and Misha were sitting farther down the alley in the shadow of some garbage cans, calmly cleaning their paws. I didn't hurt that rabbit, and you know it, Stick snarled, patting toward them. You set me up. You set yourself up, Misha drew her paw over one ear. Maybe it'll teach you not to interfere in the future, Skipper sneered. He rose to his paws and padded forward until he stood nose to nose with Stick. Stick tensed. He was here alone. If they attacked, he would be torn apart. He'd seen what Misha was prepared to do to another cat. But Skipper stayed relaxed, and his voice was almost friendly, though Stick saw hostility gleaming in his narrowed eyes. I've seen red around a lot lately, he remarked. Next time, it might be a tuft of her fur that's left beside a dead two-legged pet. Leave red out of this, Stick growled, and don't make threats you can't keep. Oh, they're not threats. Misha spoke from behind Skipper, arching her back in a long, luxurious stretch and showing her sharp teeth in a yawn. Their promises. Chapter 13 Leafstar padded up to the fresh kill pile and dropped her squirrel onto it. We hunted well today, she observed. Patchfoot nodded as he deposited his own prey, a mouse and two shrews on the pile. Shorty had caught two mice, and Shrewtooth was pleased with himself for once, for chasing a rabbit and bringing it down. The sun had risen above the gorge, but it was so early that dew still clung to the grass. The cats who had not been chosen for the dawn patrols were beginning to emerge from their dens. Sparrow Pelt bounded down the trail, halted briefly at the bottom to give one ear a good scratch, then headed for the river to drink. Wasp Whisker clambered down after him, slower and more awkward because of the wound from the rat battle. Leaf Star padded across to meet him as he reached the foot of the trail. How do you feel? She asked. Is that scratch healing well? I'm fine, Leaf Star, the gray and white Tom replied. I'm just fed up with being stuck in the gorge. Please, can I go out on patrol today? Not until Echo Song says you can, Leaf Star told him, narrowing her eyes as she examined his wound. It still looked raw, and she guessed it wouldn't take much for it to open up again. Wasp Whisker slid out his claws and gave the ground in front of him a frustrated scrape. I was afraid you would say that. Just be patient, Leafstar advised him. It's only a few days since the battle. It feels like moons, 
Wasp Whisker retorted gloomily. Following Sparrow Pelt to the water, he crouched down to lap. Leafstar let her gaze travel around the gorge as more cats appeared. She could almost taste the sense of pride and strength that her warriors shared, united by the victory over the rats. They stalked confidently out of their dens, as if they were showing off their healing wounds. We'll be back to full strength soon, Leafstar told herself with a purr of satisfaction. Several cats appeared at the top of the gorge and began running lightly down the trail. Cherrytail was returning with her border patrol. The young tortoise shell leaped down the last few tail lengths and bounded up to Leafstar. We checked out the waste heap, she reported. There was no sign of rats, and all the scents were stale. That's good news, Leafstar purred. Everything was quiet, Cole added, patting up behind Cherrytail. We picked up the scent of a loner, but it seemed to lead straight out of the territory again. Leafstar's whiskers twitched. A loner? Where was this? Between the rubbish heap and the two-legged place, Cherrytail replied, flicking her tail to show Leafstar the direction. Cole's right. The trails seem to veer into our territory for a few fox lengths and then head out again. Maybe the scent markers put it off, Cole suggested. You could be right. Leafstar gave one paw a reflective lick. It didn't seem as if the loner was a threat, but there was no harm in staying alert. All the same, we'll keep an eye on that part of the territory, just in case it comes back. The border patrol chose fresh kill from the pile and settled down to eat. Leafstar found a flat, sun-warmed stone and sat with her tail wrapped around her paws, watching her clan as the gorge stirred into full wakefulness. The two-legged place cats no longer stood out from the rest of the clan. Cole was gulping down a sparrow and chatting to Cherry Tail about that morning's patrol. Cora had joined Wasp Whisker and Sparrow Pelt at the water's edge, where Echo Song was checking on Wasp Whisker's wound. Shorty was telling yet another story to Fallow Fern's kits, while Sharp Claw and Stick were prowling up and down near the foot of the rock pile, discussing hunting techniques. All four of the newcomers took part in their share of patrols, brought in a good amount of fresh kill, and were gentle with the oldest and youngest members of the clan. Leafstar was especially relieved that Sharp Claw and Stick were getting on so well. Her deputy's brusque manner could be off-putting, and he hadn't made any close friends within his own clan. I'm still sure there's something Stick's not telling us, she thought. But he's fair and loyal to his friends, and I appreciate that. Loud meows from the top of the cliff announced the arrival of the Daylight Warriors. Frecklepaw skidded down the trail in a cloud of sand, well ahead of the others, and came to a panting halt in front of Leaf Star. I promised to prepare some herb poultices for Echo Song before the first training session, she gasped. Is that okay? Before Leafstar could reply, Echo Song came bounding up. Well done, Frecklepaw, she meowed. You've got here really early, blinking at Leafstar, she added. It's all right if I borrow her for a while? Leafstar nodded, a bit surprised that Frecklepaw seemed to prefer helping the medicine cat to hunting or battle practice. Good, Echo Song went on briskly. Frecklepaw. I need a poultice of daisy leaves. Lycanfur has been complaining of back pain. And you'd better do some burdock root. I think a few of the rat bites will need another dose. Right, Echo Song, Frecklepaw meowed happily, racing off toward the medicine cat's den. Echo Song watched her go, then headed to the waterside for a drink. Leafstar followed her and hesitated for a moment as the medicine cat lapped. Do you trust Frecklepaw to work without you to keep an eye on her? She asked eventually. The young silver tabby turned to her, scattering shining drops from her whiskers. Oh, yes. Frecklepaw knows what she's doing. She- Echo Song broke off at the sound of her name being called. Frecklepaw had popped her head outside the den. We're really low on tansy, she reported. And if Lycanfur has a bad back, she'll probably need some. You're right. Thanks for spotting that, the medicine cat replied. I could look for some while I'm out training, Frecklepaw offered. That would be really helpful out Echo Song. With a happy meow, Frecklepaw disappeared inside the den again. She's learned a lot, Leafstar meowed, impressed. Echo Song nodded, then turned back to the river, crouching down to lap a few more mouthfuls of water. In a couple of heartbeats, she stood up again, swiping her tongue around her jaws to catch the last drops. I need to think about finding an apprentice, she remarked. You mean Frecklepaw? Leafstar had just seen for herself the young cat's enthusiasm and competence, but she wasn't sure that she was the right choice for Echo Song. Can a medicine cat live part of the time with two legs? I don't know, Echo Song admitted.
But Frecklepaw has natural talent, and she enjoys the work. She learns quickly, too. Leafstar still wasn't convinced. Has Star Clan sent you any signs about this? She asked. Echo Song shook her head. I don't think I need a sign when Frecklepaw is perfect for the job. Leafstar couldn't agree. This was far more difficult than accepting kitty pets into the clan as warriors. A medicine cat needed to have a special link with Star Clan. Leafstar didn't know if their ancestors would accept a cat who was not a full member of a clan. I'll think about it, she promised. Echo Song dipped her head in acceptance, but Leafstar could see she wasn't happy with her reply. I'd better get on, the medicine cat spoke more curtly than usual. Yes, fine. Leafstar flinched at the tension that had sprung between them. Send Frecklepaw out as soon as you can. She's supposed to be hunting with Ebony Claw. Echo Song nodded and stalked off. Leafstar watched her go with an unaccustomed feeling of helplessness. She had grown used to being challenged by Sharp Claw over her decisions about the Daylight Warriors. She hadn't expected the same challenge from a cat she regarded as her closest friend in Sky Clan. Full moon tonight, Tiny Cloud gave an excited little bounce. Rockshade, I'll race you up to the Sky Rock. Leaf Star, coming across the two young warriors on her way down from her den, was about to remind them that they weren't apprentices any longer. The trail that led up to the ledge under the rim of the gorge was narrow, and there was a dangerous jump from there to the Sky Rock itself. As warriors, they should know better than to take stupid risks. But before she could speak, Cora looked up from where she was sunning herself with the other visiting cats. What's the Sky Rock? She meowed. That up there. Rockshade raised his tail to point at the flat ledge jutting out over the gorge. The whole clan meets there when the moon is full. Why? Cole asked, getting up to join the younger warriors. Can't you meet down here in the gorge? It has to be a special place, Tiny Cloud explained. And up there, we're closer to Star Clan. That's the spirits of our warrior ancestors. Cole exchanged a mystified glance with Shorty. Warrior ancestors? What are you meowing about? Leafstar stopped to listen, but stayed in the background, interested to know what the visiting cats would think about the idea that the spirits of their ancestors watched over them. Or do they? Maybe it's only clan cats who go to Star Clan when they die. Every moon we hold a gathering on the Sky Rock, Tiny Cloud began. We tell Star Clan what has been happening in the clan, and we discuss stuff. Uh, sounds interesting, Stick mewed, looking mystified. Back in the forest where Firestar lives, Rockshade went on, there are four clans. They meet at the full moon too, and exchange their news, and there's a truce, so they're not allowed to fight one another. We can't do all of that because we're only one clan, his litter mate meowed, sounding rather disappointed. But we still gather. It's what clan cats do. The two leg place cats were silent for a moment. So, you go up to the top of the cliff to talk to dead cats? Shorty meowed at last. No, that's not exactly what we do, Tiny Cloud objected, with a glance at Rockshade. She sounded confused, as if she wasn't sure what else she could say to make the visitors understand what a gathering was. I guess you have to be there, Rockshade began. Leafstar padded forward, deciding that it was time to intervene. Tiny Cloud, Rockshade, go find Sharpclaw. He'll be organizing the hunting patrols. Off you go. The warriors bounded off at once, looking distinctly relieved. You'll find out all about the gathering later, Leafstar reassured the other cats. Oh, are we invited? Cora asked, sounding pleased. Every cat comes, Leafstar told her. And if you're going to join this clan, she added to herself, you'll have to learn about Star Clan sooner or later. Leafstar padded in the paw steps of the two young warriors toward the center of the camp. She glanced over her shoulder as she heard Billy Storm call her name. Leafstar, could you give me a couple of moments, please? Billy Storm was padding down the trail with his apprentice, Snookpaw, just behind. I, uh, I want you to check out the hunting move I've been teaching Snookpaw, he explained. I'm not sure he's got it quite right. Could we go to the training area? Sure, Leafstar felt faintly uneasy. Billy Storm looked as if he had more on his mind than a hunting move. More trouble between the Daylight Warriors and the Clan Cats, she wondered. When they reached the training area, Billy Storm waved Snookpaw into the middle of the empty space. I've been showing Snookpaw how to leap onto a rabbit's back and roll it over before it can run. Snookpaw, show Leafstar. The apprentice dropped into the hunter's crouch and crept up on his imaginary rabbit. 
Leafstar watched approvingly as he waggled his haunches and leaped into the air, coming down on all four paws and flipping himself onto his back as if he was gripping the rabbit in his claws. That looks fine to me, she meowed. Snookpaw, you might want to keep your legs tighter to your body as you roll. That way, you'll keep a firmer hold on the rabbit. Thanks, Leafstar. Snookpaw scrambled to his paws and shook sand from his black and white pelt. Why don't you practice that a few times, Billy Storm suggested. We'll watch you. The apprentice nodded and crouched down again, creeping low across the open space. You've taught him well, Leafstar commented. Now, what is this really about? Billy Storm looked guilty. I wanted to know, he began, whether the visitors have said anything to you about their plans. That was the last question Leafstar had expected him to ask, yet on reflection, she realized she shouldn't be surprised. The whole clan must be speculating about what the two-legged place cats want. No, she meowed, annoyed that she sounded defensive. They haven't told me anything. Maybe you should ask them, Billy Storm hesitated, and then went on. I've seen them leading patrols of Sky Clan cats in two-leg place. Leafstar's belly lurched, and she felt her neck fur beginning to bristle. That's not possible. No patrols go hunting in two-legged place. I saw them. Billy Storm leaned closer toward her, his amber eyes full of concern. Last night, I was sitting on the wall around my house folk's garden in the shade of a thick bush. No cat could have seen me from below, and the flowers on the bush hid my scent. They walked right past me, stick and sharp claw, mint paw and rock shade. Leaf Star met his worried gaze. You must have been mistaken. She meowed, trying to sound calm. Billy Storm shook his head, but he didn't seem inclined to argue. Inside, Leafstar felt puzzled and unsure. She could imagine some of the younger warriors setting off to explore Two Leg Place, imagining it would be an adventure. But Sharpclaw is clan deputy. What was he doing there? She didn't like the fact either that he had taken Mint Paw, whom he was mentoring, while Wasp Whisker recovered from his wound. The Two Leg Place is no place for an apprentice. As she watched Snookpaw practice his move, possibilities drifted through her mind like clouds. Had Sharpclaw and the others been chasing off a dog? If so, why hadn't he reported it? You can stop now, Snookpaw, she called as the apprentice leaped and rolled once again. You've got the move down. Snookpaw scrambled up and bounced over to his mentor at the edge of the training area. Can we go and try it for real? He puffed. Tomorrow, Billy Storm promised. He added, you would catch even more rabbits if you were a bit thinner. He gave his apprentice a gentle prod in the side. Oh, but I have to eat two lots of food every day, Snookpaw protested. My house folk get really upset if I don't eat theirs, and they've made it extra tasty lately. You poor thing, I feel so sorry for you, Billy Storm murmured. He caught Leafstar's eye, and they shared an amused purr at the way Snookpaw seemed genuinely downcast. Leafstar shoved the thought of Sharp Claw leading a patrol into Two Leg Place to the back of her mind. Sky Clan was strong and contented now, with the rats safely defeated. There was no need to go looking for trouble by challenging her deputy on something that might have a perfectly innocent explanation. As the last scarlet traces of sunlight faded from the sky, Leafstar kept casting glances toward the top of the gorge. This was the time when Harvey Moon and MacGyver were allowed to come back to the clan. But will they want to? Surely they should be here by now. All the other daylight warriors had stayed late in the gorge, so they could attend the gathering. Snookpaw and Frecklepaw were part of an excited huddle with their fellow apprentices, while Billy Storm and Ebony Claw waited with Patchfoot and Petal Nose for the signal to climb the trail. I wonder if I was too harsh with Harvey Moon and MacGyver, Leafstar murmured to herself. As Echo Song padded past with a bunch of yarrow leaves, she meowed out loud, Echo Song, do you think I should have banished those two daylight warriors? Course, the medicine cat mumbled around her mouthful of herbs. They've got to learn. She headed for her den to store the leaves away. Leafstar watched Echo Song's fluffy tail whisk out of sight. I'll feel a lot better when they arrive, but what will I do if they don't come back? Excited squeaking broke out behind her as Fallow Fern brought her kits down from the nursery. Nettle Kit, sit still, she ordered. Your neck fur is all rumpled, and I can't lick it straight when you're bouncing around like that. Leafstar turned to watch the kits bundling around their mother. I'm going to sit on the sky rock, Plum Kit announced. 
I'm going to jump right over the gap and sit with the warriors. You certainly are not, her mother scolded, pausing in her firm tongue strokes over Nettle Kit's neck. Her sharp gaze traveled over her kits. The Skyrock is for warriors. Besides, you're too young to leap across the gap. And if even one of you tries it, all four of you will go straight back to the nursery. But, Rabbit Kit protested, not another word. You're only kits. You can't possibly jump that far. Can too, Plum Kit muttered. Her mother flicked her over the ear with the tip of her tail. Leafstar was distracted from the antics of the kits as Wasp Whisker limped past. How is your wound? She called to him. Do you think you can leap across to the Sky Rock? The gray and white Tom nodded determinedly. I'll be fine, Leafstar. She wasn't certain, but before she could protest, she heard yowls of greeting coming from the top of the cliff. Relief rushed through her from nose to tail tip as she recognized the outlines of Harvey Moon and MacGyver. Hey, look who's here, Patchfoot exclaimed as the two daylight warriors raced down the trail. Their clanmates clustered around to welcome them back to the clan, and Leafstar let out a sigh of relief. Now maybe we can carry on and put their bad behavior behind us. As the initial excitement died down, Harvey Moon spotted the two leg place cats, who were sitting together in the shadow of the rock pile. His white neck fur started to fluff up. Who are they? He demanded, flicking his ears in their direction. They're cats from another two leg place, Rockshade explained, springing to his paws and padding over to the visitors. Firestar met them on his way here. This is Stick, he began, touching each cat on the shoulder with his tail tip as he spoke their name. And this is Cora, Shorty, and Cole. These are Harvey Moon and MacGyver he told the visitors. They, uh, they haven't been here for a while. They're kitty, I mean, daylight warriors like Billy Storm and Ebony Claw. Stick dipped his head. We're glad to meet you. Harvey Moon and MacGyver didn't look as if they wanted to return the compliment. What are they doing here? MacGyver asked. They're just staying here for a while, Patchfoot replied. They've been helping us out. What, with hunting and everything? Harvey Moon sounded shocked. Leafstar suppressed a sigh. The questions were natural enough, she supposed, but did he have to sound so unwelcoming? They've been great, actually, Sharp Claw meowed. We would never have won the rat battle without them. Rat battle? MacGyver spun around to face the clan deputy. What rat battle? There was this huge heap of old stuff that the two legs left on our territory. Cherry Tail's eyes stretched wide with excitement as she began to explain. It was full of rats. We found it on patrol, Patchfoot added. We had to get rid of the rats, and Stick and the others knew what to do. They have a lot of trouble with rats in their two-leg place. They eat rats, Mint Paw chipped in. Stick built a practice heap here in the gorge, Petalnose went on. And we all learned the right moves for fighting rats. Then we sneaked up to the heap one night, Bounce Fire began to describe the attack. How the clan had blocked up all but two exits and driven the rats out into the claws of the waiting warriors. I was badly wounded, Wasp Whisker told the kitty pets, proudly turning sideways to display his scar. I might have died if it wasn't for Echo's song. But no cat died, Sharp Claw finished. And we owe that to our visitors. I wish I'd been there, MacGyver meowed enviously as he gave Wasp Whisker's scar a sniff. I'd have killed loads of rats. Oh, you wouldn't have been there anyway, Rockshade told him. It was too early in the morning for you. None of the Daylight Warriors were there. Mint Paul mewed as Harvey Moon and MacGyver looked puzzled. But the two leg place cats were there? Harvey Moon checked, sounding offended. Yes, they organized the attack, Cherry Tail replied. Harvey Moon and MacGyver exchanged a hurt glance. Leafstar could feel the rising tension. She was annoyed with Rockshade and Mint Paul for not being more sensitive, and with herself for doubting yet again that it had been the right decision to exclude the Daylight Warriors. As she caught Sharp Claw's eye, the deputy stepped forward. That's all in the past, he mewed. Tonight's the gathering, and it's time we were off. He waved his tail and stood back for Leafstar to lead the way up the trail that led to the Sky Rock. I shouldn't worry so much, Leafstar told herself, as she took her place at the head of her clan. Harvey Moon and MacGyver probably just feel left out, and that might not be a bad thing, if it makes them better warriors. The moon cast soft silver light onto the cliffs, turning everything gray as the cats of Sky Clan reached the Sky Rock. Leafstar felt her paws tingle when she jumped across the gap from the edge of the cliff to the ledge that jutted out over the gorge. This was the place where Firestar had shown Star Clan to her, and where she had received her nine lives from the spirits of those long ago cats. 
Wind whispered over the surface of the rock as more cats joined her. Now that Sky Clan had grown so big, there was only room for the senior warriors. The newly made warriors, Tiny Cloud, Rock Shade, and Bounce Fire, sat closest to the edge on top of the cliff, with Mint Paw and Sage Paw just behind them. The Daylight Warriors sat a tail length or so away, as did the visitors. Leafstar noticed with a pang of uneasiness that the three groups of cats were keeping themselves separate, even though there didn't seem to be any outward hostility among them. Clovertail, Fallowfern, and her kids sat on a pile of curved stones at the end of the trail, a few tail lengths from the gap. The two she-cats enclosed the wriggling kits with their tails to make sure none of them tried to jump across. Lycanfur and Tangle joined them. The two elders had hauled themselves up the trail, complaining every paw step of the way, but Leafstar knew that neither of them would dream of missing a gathering. When her clanmates had settled down, Leafstar sat in silence for a heartbeat or two, gazing up at the full moon and the stars. It was easy to imagine that the cats she had met when she received her nine lives were looking down at her now. What do they think about the way I'm leading their clan? She took a deep breath and let her gaze travel around the circle of warriors. I, Leafstar, leader of Sky Clan, call upon my ancestors to look down upon these cats she began. These gatherings were still unfamiliar, and she was sharply aware that she was forging traditions that her clan would follow for season after season. I need to get it right. Since last we gathered on the Sky Rock, we have defended our territory against a horde of rats. Every cat fought bravely and took wounds for the sake of our clan. I commend especially Wasp Whisker, who almost died in the fight and Patchfoot and Sparrowpelt, who were particularly vigilant in keeping watch on the rats until we were ready to attack. The three cats she named blinked proudly at her praise. Sparrowpelt gave his shoulder for a couple of embarrassed licks. I also need to mention Frecklepaw, Leafstar went on. On the flat part of the cliff, the apprentice jumped and gazed wide-eyed at her leader, as if she was afraid she was going to be scolded for something in front of the whole clan. She worked hard to help Echo Song care for the wounded warriors, Leafstar went on. And she has learned a great deal about herbs and how to treat injuries. Could she be a medicine cat? Star Clan, please give me a sign. But there was no response from the stars, glittering icily above her head. Leafstar spotted Echo Song giving the young tabby an approving nod, and Frecklepaw ducked her head in response, her eyes shining. Visitors have arrived in the gorge from a two-legged place downriver, Leafstar went on with her report. Stick, Shorty, Cora, and Cole have settled down well during their stay in the clan, and we thank them for the help they gave in fighting against the rats. Is this the time or the place to invite them to stay with us for good? Leafstar asked herself, aware of Sharpclaw's green gaze boring into her like a woodpecker attacking a tree. No, and I'm not going to ask them what they are going to do next. I need to find a more private place for that. To her surprise, Stick rose to his paws and padded to the very edge of the cliff. Thank you, Leafstar, he meowed, inclining his head formally to her. We're all grateful for Sky Clan's hospitality. We're glad that we were able to help you with the rats. Leafstar dipped her head in reply, and the visiting cat withdrew again to sit beside his friends. Now, she went on glancing once more around at her warriors. Does any cat have a question or a problem that they want to discuss? I do. Clovertail rose to her paws and stretched her neck to look over the cat sitting in front of her. I'd like to use one of the new dens as a birthing den. I know we drove off the rats, but if they come back, or if a fox or a badger finds its way into the gorge, one of those upper dens would be much safer for young kits. It would be easier for them to fall out, though, Petalnose warned. Clovertail twitched her ears. I know. We'd need to move the kits back into the nursery once they were strong enough to go outside. Leafstar guessed that Clovertail was worried that her new litter would be overwhelmed by fallow ferns' rambunctious kits if they were born in the nursery. She could have a point. Very well, she replied to Clovertail. Let's move you over there in the morning, and we'll see how it goes when your kits are born. Mint Paw and Sage Paw, please fetch bedding for Clovertail and make sure she's comfortable. We will, Leafstar, Mint Paw called out. Thank you. And if all goes well, we'll make the arrangement permanent. 
Clovertail thanked her and sat down again. Harvey Moon and MacGyver got up and stepped up to the edge of the cliff, glancing at each other as if they weren't sure which one of them was going to speak first. We're glad to be back, Harvey Moon meowed in a rush. We're looking forward to being part of Sky Clan again, MacGyver added. We've learned not to be so stupid. Good, Leafstar purred. We're happy to welcome you back. I'd like to suggest something, Petalnose mewed as the two kitty pets sat down again. What about a special rat patrol, just to make sure that they don't return to that pile of stuff? Good idea, Shrewtooth agreed, flattening his ears. A babble of comment broke out. Leafstar let it continue for a few moments before raising her tail for silence. Sharpclaw, what do you think? The deputy paused for a moment, his green eyes narrowed. Finally, he shook his head. I don't think it's necessary. The border patrols and hunting patrols will spot any signs of rats in the territory. Leafstar nodded. I think you're right. But if there are any fresh signs of rats, she added to Petalnose, then we'll set up a rat patrol right away. Thank you, Leafstar. Petalnose replied, seeming content with that decision. What about that loner my patrol scented near the rubbish heap? Cherrytail asked. Do we need to do anything? Did the evening border patrol spot anything? Leafstar meowed. We picked up the stale scent, Billy Storm, who had led the patrol, replied. But nothing new. Then I don't think there's anything we can do, Leafstar decided. Except that all patrols should keep a good lookout in that area. She was about to draw the gathering to a close when Lycanfur hauled herself to her paws, shaking her rumpled pelt. What about the bedding in our den? She demanded. I don't think the moss has been changed for a moon. Leafstar spotted Mintpaw open her jaws to protest, and Sagepaw quickly flicked his tail across her mouth. His sister glared at him, but kept quiet. Sorry, Lycanfur, Snookpaw called out. I'll fetch some more as soon as I get here in the morning. Muttering, the elder sat down again and leaned across to mew something into Tangle's ear. When none of the other cats spoke, Leafstar rose to her paws. We thank Star Clan that our clan is safe and thriving, and that prey is plentiful. The gathering is at an end. She watched as her senior warriors leaped back over the gap, with Sparrowpelt watching Wasp Whisker carefully to make sure he didn't fall, and began to pad down the trail toward the camp. At last, only she, Sharpclaw, and Echo Song were left. I thought that went well, Leafstar commented. There don't seem to be any serious problems. For now, Sharpclaw meowed, giving his chest for a couple of thoughtful licks. I heard what you said about Frecklepaw, he continued. It sounds as if you're going to make her Echo Song's apprentice. I'm thinking about it, Leafstar responded guardedly. Sharpclaw's eyes stretched wide. Have you got bees in your brain? You must know it's impossible. Why? Echo Song slid out her claws and her neck fur began to bristle. Leafstar hadn't often seen the gentle young tabby look this annoyed. Why do you need to ask? Sharpclaw sounded exasperated. She's a kitty pet. She's a Sky Clan apprentice, Echo Song retorted. And she has an exceptional talent for healing. I wish I'd learned as quickly when I first came here. Sharpclaw's tail tip twitched. But half the time, she isn't here. I don't care how talented she is. What happens if a warrior is injured while their medicine cat is snoozing in a two-leg nest? And what happens if I'm killed before I've trained an apprentice? Echo Song hissed back. The clan wouldn't have a medicine cat. There are other possibilities, Sharpclaw argued. Name one. Leafstar stretched out her tail to separate the two angry cats. Echo Song is right that there's no full clan cat with any interest in healing. She meowed carefully. Being a medicine cat demands true dedication. But there are kits growing up all the time, Sharpclaw pointed out. Fallow Ferns 4 and Clovertail's new litter, maybe one of them. And maybe not, Echo Song snapped. We don't have to decide now. Leafstar realized she needed to bring this discussion to a close before either of the quarreling cats said something they would regret later. Echo Song, have you had any sign yet from Star Clan about Frecklepaw? Echo Song shook her head. I've looked for one, Leaf Star, but there's been nothing yet. Sharpclaw let out a snort of contempt. And there won't be. Leaf Star glared at him. We don't know that. It's in the paws of our ancestors, and maybe this can all be resolved easily, she went on. Frecklepaw might decide to come and live permanently in the gorge. 
but Echo Song, you're not to put any pressure on her. I wouldn't do that, Leaf Star, the medicine cat promised. Then let's wait and see what happens. You'll let me know if you do have a sign, whatever it seems to say? Echo Song nodded. Of course. Leaf Star stood up and stretched each hind leg in turn. Come on, let's get back to our dens. The young medicine cat was the first to leave, dipping her head to Leaf Star and shooting an icy glare at Sharp Claw before running lightly across the sky rock and leaping across the gap. Sharp Claw, please don't ruffle her fur, Leaf Star murmured. Then make sure she stays out of mine, Sharp Claw retorted. Chapter 14 Fluffy white clouds were building up above the gorge when Leaf Star emerged from her den on the morning after the gathering. The sun had not yet risen, and a stiff breeze buffeted her fur. She yawned and gave herself a quick grooming as she watched her clanmates trot down the pathways to the rock pile. Bounding down to join them, she found Sharp Claw setting the patrols. I'll lead the border patrol, he announced. Stick, Billy Storm, and Tiny Cloud, you come with me. Sparrowpelt, I'd like you to lead a hunting patrol with Shrewtooth, Cora, and Rockshade. Shorty, you lead the other hunting patrol with- Hey, Shorty's not a warrior, Patchfoot interrupted. Should he be leading a patrol? Sharpclaw gave his tail an irritable twitch. Sorry, you're right. You lead the patrol then, Patchfoot. Shorty can go with you with Bouncefire and Harvey Moon. Leafstar looked on with approval as the patrol started to move off. She liked to see her clan like this busy and well-organized. This is a new day. Star Clan grant that all last night's tensions have vanished. Are you coming, Snookpaw? Billy Storm called, glancing back at his apprentice as Sharpclaw led his patrol toward the bottom of the trail. Sorry, I can't, Snookpaw replied. I promised to fetch fresh moss for Tangle and Lycanfur. Fine, Billy Storm nodded. We'll do some battle practice when you get back. Great! Snookpaw's tail shot straight up into the air as he clambered over the rock pile and bounded across to the other side of the river. Leafstar was impressed with the young cat's loyalty to the promise he made last night to the elders. He'll make a fine warrior. I hope he decides to stay with us full time. She watched Snookpaw creep along the narrow ledge beside the stream until he disappeared into the tunnel from where the water flowed out beneath the rock pile. Leafstar pictured him shuffling along the tiny stone path that led to the whispering cave where the moss grew. With the patrols gone, the other cats settled down to rest, eat, or share tongues. Ebony Claw took Frecklepaw up to the training area for some practice. Leafstar spotted the apprentice casting a longing look back at Echo Song's den as she padded away. Leafstar sat beside the river, intending to give herself a more thorough grooming, but she had barely licked one shoulder clean when Lycanfur shuffled up to her. I might have known that pesky apprentice didn't mean what he said, the elder grumbled. There's no sign of him, and we're still stuck with our old moss. Leafstar blinked in surprise. I saw Snookpaw go into the cave myself, she mewed. Hasn't he come back yet? Lycanfur shook her head. I'll go and see what's keeping him. The ledge to the whispering cave was wet and slippery, and Leafstar had to set her paws down carefully. Black water rushed along beside her a couple of mouse lengths below the ledge. Cold, damp air crept into her pelt, and she shivered. At last, Leafstar saw a pale light up ahead, reflecting on the surface of the river. The ledge widened out into a flat path, and she quickened her pace as she padded into the whispering cave. Leafstar paused at the cave entrance to admire the secret world underneath the gorge. The walls of the cave were broken into cracks and ledges. Shaggy clumps of moss hung from every surface, giving off a pale, eerie light. Reflections of the water rippled across the cave roof. The sound of the river and unseen dripping water echoed in Leafstar's ears. This was the place where Echo Song came to share tongues with her warrior ancestors. Though she was no medicine cat, Leafstar felt very close to Star Clan here, as if she might hear their voices if she listened hard enough. At the far side of the cave, Snookpaw was stretching up on his hind paws to claw down a bundle of moss. A large heap of it already lay on the cave floor beside him. Well done, Leafstar meowed. That should make a fine bed for lichen fur and tangle. Snookpaw jumped with surprise and dropped to all four paws. Leafstar, he exclaimed. You nearly scared me out of my fur. Sorry, 
leave Star mute. She decided not to tell him that Lycanfer had been complaining. Do you want help carrying that lot out? Please, Snookpaw puffed, beginning to roll the moss into two balls. It is a lot, isn't it? He added smugly. Leafstar picked up one of the balls of moss and turned to head out of the cave, pausing to let Snookpaw go in front of her. The pale light from the cave slowly died away behind them. Edging along the trail was even more difficult when their front paws were hidden by the clump of moss. Rounding the curve in the river, they drew closer to the ragged gap of daylight where the water swirled out. Then Snookpaw's claws skidded on the slippery ledge. With a squeal of alarm, he dropped his moss and toppled into the river, his paws flailing vainly for a grip on the stone. Dark water closed over his head. Snookpaw! Dropping her own moss, Leafstar bounded to the spot where the apprentice had disappeared. She was in time to see him resurface a couple of tail lengths farther downstream. His paws churned the water and his jaws opened in a terrified wail. Help! Help me! He was already sinking again as Leafstar flung herself into the water and gripped him by the scruff before he could disappear. The water was dark and shockingly icy. For a couple of heartbeats, Leafstar was stunned into stillness and didn't know which way to swim. Then she caught sight of the light at the cave entrance. Striking out strongly with her hind legs, she reached the side of the cave. But the wall was smooth and slick with water. She couldn't pull herself up to the ledge again, especially with Snookpaw weighing her down. Star Clan, help us. All Leaf Star could do was keep Snookpaw's head above water while the current bore them along. She felt a moment's panic as they were swept out into daylight and the sun dazzled her eyes, blinding her while the water swept them in a circle. Rolled over by a wave, Leafstar lost all sense of direction. Then her head bobbed to the surface. Still with her teeth fixed in Snookpaw's scruff, she let the current swirl them toward the side of the pool. At last, she was able to crawl out and collapse on the stones with Snookpaw, a sodden mound of fur beside her. Leafstar! Leafstar! Still muzzy with exhaustion, Leafstar recognized Cherry Tail's voice. She opened her eyes to see the young tortoise shell gazing down at her anxiously. Check, Snookpaw, she rasped. As Cherrytail bent over Snookpaw, he began struggling to sit up. Shivering with shock, he coughed up a stream of water and flopped back onto the stones again. At least he's alive, Leafstar thought. Thanks, Star Clan. By now, more cats were racing across the rock pile or leaping across the stepping stones a little farther downstream. Echo Song was among them, pushing her way through as they crowded around. Keep back and let me see him, she ordered, crouching down beside the young black and white Tom. Leafstar, what happened? He was fetching moss, and he slipped into the river, Leafstar croaked, managing to get to her paws and give her pelt a good shake. Echo Song nodded and gently pressed Snookpaw's belly with one paw. Another stream of water gushed out of the apprentice's mouth. You'll be fine, Echo Song told him reassuringly. Come with me to my den. I'll give you some thyme leaves for the shock, and you can have a good sleep. Still coughing, Snookpaw tottered to his paws. No, he rasped. I want to go home. Don't make me stay here. Startled, Leafstar took a pace back. She wanted to tell him that the medicine cat would look after him just as well as his two legs. But she couldn't bring herself to make him stay in the gorge when he looked so miserable. All right, she meowed. If you're sure you can make it that far. I'll go with him, Cherrytail offered, letting Snookpaw lean against her shoulder. I'll make sure he's okay. Thank you, Cherrytail. The young tortoiseshell warrior had been a kitty pet once, and she would be familiar with the two-leg place. Make sure you get some rest, Snookpaw, and we'll see you again as soon as you're ready. Snookpaw headed off with Cherrytail, then halted and glanced back. Thank you, Leafstar. You saved my life. You're welcome, Leafstar mewed gently. She watched Cherry Tail helping Snookpaw across the rock pile. Though she was thankful the accident had been no worse, she was still shaken. Gazing at the cats gathered around her, she announced, From now on, no cat must go to the Whispering Cave alone, except for you, Echo Song. And moss gathering must always be supervised by a warrior. Good idea, Wasp Whisker meowed. Petalnose nodded. When I think what could happen to our apprentices, she shuddered. Leaving her clanmates to return to camp, Leafstar ventured back along the ledge until she found the remains of the moss that she and Snookpaw had dropped.
Most of it had been washed away by the river, but Leafstar rolled up what was left and carried it across the rock pile to the elder's den. What's that? Egan first sniffed. There's not enough moss there to make a bed for a tick. Well, it's all you're getting for now, Leafstar retorted. Snookpaw fell in the river, fetching this. He could have died. Lycanfer blinked. Clumsy apprentice, she muttered. He should watch where he's putting his paws. Biting back an angry retort, Leafstar left her and went to find a sunny spot where she could sit and clean the river water from her pelt. She was drowsing in the sunlight when she heard excited squeaks behind her. Fallowfern's kits were scampering over to the bottom of the trail where Sharpclaw and the Border Patrol were climbing down. Billy Storm, Billy Storm, Plum Kit squealed. Snookpaw fell in the river and he nearly drowned. What? Billy Storm leaped down the last couple of tail lengths, his fur beginning to fluff up and his eyes wide with horror. Where is he? It's not as bad as that, Leafstar rose to her paws and padded over to the ginger and white tom. He did fall in the river, fetching moss from the cave, but he was fine. He went home. Billy Storm let his neck fur lie flat again, though his eyes were still full of concern. I'll check on him later, he promised. My two-leg nest isn't far from his. Thanks, Leafstar replied. I'm worried about him. I wish he'd stayed and let Echo Song take a look at him. You can come with me to see him if you like, Billy Storm suggested. Me? Come with you to the two-leg place? Leafstar felt every hair on her pelt start to prickle. No, thanks, Billy Storm. I don't feel comfortable among two-leg nests. Unlike your clanmates, Billy Storm murmured. Leafstar didn't respond. She hadn't forgotten his report that he had seen, or thought he saw, Sharp Claw and Stick leading a patrol in the two-leg place, but she didn't want to hear any more of the rumors. In the end, she hadn't confronted Sharp Claw about it, because she knew her deputy would never do such a thing without telling her. Billy Storm must have mistaken some kitty pets for our warriors. What's this I hear about Snookpaw? Sharp Claw called, padding over to her with Fallowfern's kits tumbling around his paws. Is he all right? He will be. Leafstar assured him. At least we have enough warriors for the rest of today's patrols, Sharpclaw meowed. He hurried off, calling to Wasp Whisker and Petalnose as he went. I'd better go with him, Billy Storm meowed. I've nothing to do, seeing that my apprentice isn't here. I'd promised to show him some fighting moves. Show us instead, Fallow Fern's kids chorused, scrabbling at his fur until they nearly knocked him off his paws. Billy Storm cast an amused glance at Leafstar. You're not apprenticed yet, he told the kids. But you could help me with them if you want, Leafstar mewed. Fallowfern is worn out from looking after them. Besides, she wants to help Clovertail move into the new birthing den. We could take them off her paws for a bit. Yes, please, Creek Kit begged. I can fight better than all the others. Can't, Nettle Kit squeaked, jumping on his littermate. Leafstar let out a small mrow of laughter as she watched the kits rolling around, battering at one another with tiny paws. Are they bothering you, Leafstar? Fallowfern puffed, bounding up with a harassed look. Not a bit, Leafstar replied. Should we take them for a while? It would leave you free to help Clovertail. Oh, would you? Fallowfern's voice was full of gratitude. Now listen, she went on sternly to her kits. You do exactly what Leafstar and Billy Storm tell you. I don't want to hear that you've put one whisker out of place. Do you understand? Yes, fellow Fern. The kits sat up, their fur rumpled and their eyes wide and innocent. We'll be good. And hedgehogs will fly, Billy Storm whispered into Leafstar's ear. As fellow Fern padded off to join Clovertail, Billy Storm rounded up the kits. Come on, we'll go to the training area. Yes. Rabbit Kit bounced up and down with his tail waving. Last one, there's a kitty pet. All four kits took off in a flurry of sand. When Leafstar and Billy Storm caught up to them at the training area, Creek Kit was crouched in the middle of the open space. His lips were drawn back to display tiny, sharp teeth. I'm a fox and I'm attacking the camp, he announced. Stay away or I'll rip your fur off, Plum Kit responded, sliding out her claws. That's enough, Billy Storm strode out into the sandy space and raised his tail to block Plum Kit as she hurled herself at her brother. Watch it, the fox will get you, she squealed. Billy Storm sidestepped rapidly to stop Creek Kit from sinking his teeth into his hind leg. This is not a training session, Leafstar reminded the excited kits. That won't happen until your apprentices. But that's moons away, 
Creek Kit muttered, disappointed. I want to show you my battle moves. We'll play some games instead, Billy Storm meowed. Let's see how good you are at climbing. The kits bounced around him as he led the way across to the thorn tree that Sharpclaw had used for his training exercises. Its lower branches were thick and strong, safe for the kits to improve their skills. When you climb, Billy Storm began, holding the kits back with his tail so that they didn't hurl themselves into the tree. You need to look for paw holds, places you can dig your claws in. You must never move until you know where you're going to put your paws next, and always think about how you're going to get down. That way, climbing is safe. The kits nodded seriously as the ginger Tom finished speaking. Okay, Leafstar meowed. Rabbit kit, let's see if you can climb up to that first branch. The tiny brown Tom scampered up to the tree and fixed his claws into a knot hole, then scrabbled with his hind paws to boost himself up the trunk. Soon, he sat panting on the branch. I did it, he exclaimed. Well done, Billy Storm praised him. Plumkit, you next. The dark gray she-cat climbed quickly and neatly to sit beside her brother on the branch. Nettlekit followed. I was faster than you, he boasted as he crouched on the branch next to the others. We're not trying to be fast, we're trying to be safe, Billy Storm pointed out, waving his tail for Creek Kit to climb. The little gray tabby scrambled up the trunk, but when he reached the branch, he slipped and dangled down with his hind paws waving. Help, he squealed. Go on, you can pull yourself up. Leafstar encouraged him. With a massive effort, Creek Kit hauled himself up and managed to fasten his hind claws into the branch. Made it, he gasped. Very good, all of you, Billy Storm meowed. Now let's see you come down, one at a time, and slowly, Nettle Kit. Leafstar remembered her mother teaching her to climb, seasons ago in the woods. Coming down was always harder and more frightening than going up. Billy Storm guided Creek Kit down, then Rabbit Kit and Nettle Kit. Where's Plum Kit? He asked, looking around. Did she get down already? A screech of terror interrupted him. Tipping her head back, Leaf Star saw Plum Kit perched almost at the top of the tree, all four paws clinging to the stump of a broken branch. I'm stuck, she wailed. I can't get down. You shouldn't be up there in the first place, Billy Storm mewed exasperatedly. And we should have kept a better eye on her, Leafstar added. Okay, Plum Kit, I'm coming to get you. Muscles pumping, Leafstar raced up the tree. Plum Kit was trembling when she reached her. I'm going to fall, she whimpered. No, you're not, Leafstar reassured her, touching her on one shoulder with the tip of her tail. Look, put your hind paw just here. Slowly, Leafstar guided the tiny she-cat down the tree. Plum Kit's courage had returned by the time she reached the lowest branch, and she sprang off, landing on Billy Storm, who had stretched out to rest underneath. Billy Storm jumped up, baring his teeth and growling with pretend fierceness. I'll teach you to pounce on me, Plum Kit let out a row of laughter. Teach me too, Rabbit Kit squealed, scrambling up the tree again and hurling himself down on Billy Storm. I'm not scared of you. Billy Storm rolled his eyes at Leaf Star as all four kits raced up the tree and jumped down, springing around with their tails high as he growled at them and swiped at them with his claws sheathed. Leaf Star joined in too, pretending to be asleep until some kit landed on top of her and cuffed her over the ears with tiny paws. I haven't had so much fun in moons. We've got to fight these beasts, Nettle Kit announced. Rabbit Kit, Plum Kit, you attack from that side. His littermates scampered off. Billy Storm and Leafstar found themselves surrounded with the kits creeping up on them in a kind of hunter's crouch. Are you scared? Plum Kit meowed. You should be, Creek Kit squeaked. We're fiercer than you. It's getting late, Billy Storm mewed at last. Time to go back to camp. A chorus of protest came from the kits. We're not tired, Plum Kit insisted. We want to play some more. I know, but Fallow Fern will be wondering where you are. Leafstar noticed that a blackbird had landed on one of the highest branches of the thorn tree. You see that bird? Billy Storm, do you think you could catch it? Billy Storm looked up, his eyes narrowing. I expect so. Off you go then. Kits, this is how a Sky Clan warrior hunts. The kits watched, enthralled, as Billy Storm leaped into the tree and crept up to the higher branches, trying not to shake the one where the bird was perching. Leafstar admired his perfect balance. 
He's so good at jumping and climbing. He must be a Sky Clan descendant. Billy Storm shuffled along a branch until he had enough space for a clear leap at the blackbird. At the last moment, it tried to take off, but he grabbed it in his strong jaws and bounded down the tree again to drop the limp body in front of the kits. That was great, Rabbit Kit squeaked. I want to learn to do that, Nettle Kit mewed. Show us now. Another time, little ones, Leafstar promised. You can share, Billy Storm meowed, nudging his prey toward the kits. Blackbird is very tasty. The kits gathered around the fresh kill, scrambling over one another in their eagerness. It's the best thing I've ever eaten, Plum Kit announced, looking up with a feather on her nose. The sun was going down by the time the kits had finished eating. Come on, Leafstar meowed. Now we really do have to go back to camp. Don't wanna, Nettle Kit protested, his words punctuated by a massive yawn. Wanna climb some more. The only place you're going to climb is into your nest, Billy Storm told him, rounding up the littermates with a sweep of his tail. Let's go. The kits were stumbling from tiredness as they followed Leaf Star back to the rock pile where Fallow Fern was waiting. Thank you so much, the pale brown she-cat exclaimed. Have they behaved themselves? They've been fine, Billy Storm assured her. Good. We've made Clovertail really comfortable in the new birthing den. It won't be long before her kits come. Can we play with them? Plum Kit asked, her voice muzzy with sleep. Not at first, her mother warned. They'll be too little. Now say thank you to Leaf Star and Billy Storm for looking after you. Thank you, the kits chorused. Can we do it again tomorrow? Nettle Kit pleaded. We'll see, Leaf Star purred. Go with your mother now. I don't know how Fallow Fern manages all four of them, she added to Billy Storm as she watched the she cat herding her litter up the trail toward the nursery. I'm worn out. Me too, Billy Storm agreed. But they're great kits. I enjoyed playing with them. You'd better go home now and check on Snookpaw, Leafstar mewed. Tell him to get well soon. We're all missing him. I'll do that. Billy Storm whisked his tail lightly over Leafstar's flank, then headed up the trail that led to the top of the gorge. Even though Leafstar had said she was worn out, the session with the kits had left her feeling playful. Her paws tingled with energy. Part of her wanted to race along the top of the cliff, feeling the wind in her fur, or roll in crackly leaves under the trees. You're not a kit anymore, she scolded herself. Better settle for a juicy piece of fresh kale instead. Her heart lighter than it had been for many days, she padded off to join her clanmates as they ate. Chapter 15 Leafstar brushed through the dew-laden grass, pausing to glance over her shoulder at the rest of the border patrol. Shorty, try to keep up, she called. I know the rats are gone, but it's not a good idea to get separated around here. Sorry, the two-legged place cat plodded up to stand beside Petalnose. Trying to muffle a yawn, he added, I can't get used to these early mornings. You will sooner or later, Petalnose promised. Leafstar gave him a nod and carried on. Above the trees, the sky was pale and clear, promising hot sunshine later. The only sound was the swish of grass and the soft rustling of branches. As they approached the clearing where they had fought the rats, Leafstar halted and stretched her jaws wide to taste the air, almost gagging on the rotting scents from the heap of two-leg waste. But the traces of rat were faint and stale. They hadn't returned. I can smell another cat, she mewed after a moment. Cherry Tail, is that the loner you told us about? The fourth member of the patrol tasted the air. That's him, she confirmed. Fresh, too. He's been here again. Leafstar tracked the scent for a few paw steps. It led across the border in the direction of the two-leg place, though she didn't think it had been left by any kitty pet. The scent was too green and sharp for that, not muffled by two-leg smells. Do you want us to follow it? Cherrytail asked, her paws working in the grass. Leafstar thought for a couple of heartbeats. It doesn't seem worth it, she meowed. It's the only scent here, so the loner hasn't been stealing prey. But I'll make sure all the clan knows to keep a lookout. Was that the right decision? She wondered, as she led the patrol back through the trees. What would Firestar have done? At the top of the gorge, Leafstar was pleased to spot Billy Storm on the trail ahead of her. 
though her pleasure faded when she realized that his apprentice wasn't with him. She quickened her pace and caught up to the ginger and white Tom as he reached the bottom of the ravine. Hi, what happened to Snookpaw? Is he okay? Billy Storm turned at the sound of her voice. His green eyes showed that he shared her concern. I don't know. I went to his nest, but I couldn't find him, and he didn't answer when I called out to him. I think his two legs must have shut him inside. Uneasiness stirred within Leafstar. Snookpaw had never found it hard to get out before. Maybe he's still tired after yesterday, she began. We'll have to- She broke off at the sound of excited squealing as Fallow Fern's kits swarmed around them. Billy Storm, Nettle Kit squeaked. We've been waiting for you, play with us again. Yes, be that giant beast, Plum Kit urged. Leaf Star, you too, you were scary. You'll have to wait, Billy Storm told them. You were very lucky to have your clan leader all to yourselves yesterday. Leaf Star twitched her whiskers with amusement. Maybe later, Kits, she meowed. I've got to check the patrols now. As she was speaking, Fallow Fern bounded up, looking flustered. Are you bothering Leaf Star and Billy Storm again? She asked her kits. Come with me right away. You haven't even been groomed this morning. With an apologetic glance at Leaf Star, she hustled the kits off to a flat stone near the water's edge and started to groom Rabbit Kit with firm strokes of her tongue. Billy Storm, are you ready for a hunting patrol? Sharp Claw meowed, padding up with stick and sparrow pelt. When the ginger and white Tom nodded, he waved his tail to where Wasp Whisker was waiting with his apprentice, Mint Paw, and Tiny Cloud and MacGyver. Over there. Billy Storm dipped his head to Leaf Star and padded over to join the patrol, who headed downstream with Wasp Whisker in the lead. Sharp Claw gathered his own patrol, beckoning with his tail to Cole, who was washing his paws near the fresh kill pile. I thought we'd try the woods near the rat heap, he meowed to Leaf Star. Good idea, Leaf Star replied. You can keep an eye open for that loner. My border patrol sent it him again today. Will do. Sharp Claw gave her a brisk nod and led his patrol up the trail. With her clan mates organized for the day, there was little for Leafstar to do, but she felt too energetic to sit and drowse in the sun. I think I'll go and see how the prey is running, she decided. I haven't hunted alone for at least a moon. But as Leafstar climbed the trail, she found Cora outside the warrior's den with her paws tucked under her and her eyes fixed on the distance. She jumped when Leafstar's shadow fell across her. You startled me, she mewed. I was thinking of something else, I guess. Were you looking for one of the warriors? I think they're all out hunting. No, I'm just off for some hunting myself. Cora hesitated for a moment, then asked. Would you mind if I came with you? Not at all, Leafstar tried to hide her surprise. Cora was the most reserved of the visitors, keeping her thoughts to herself, although she was always polite and joined in with clan activities when she was asked to. The black she-cat fell in behind Leafstar as they climbed to the top of the cliff, then padded beside her as they headed deeper into the woods. This must be different from hunting in the two-leg place, Leafstar remarked. Are there any trees there? A few, Cora responded. Trees and bushes and two-leg gardens. What kind of prey do you hunt? Birds, mostly. Leafstar pressed on, determined to make some sort of conversation. Stick says you eat rats, Cora nodded. They don't taste that good, but they're food. Leafstar gave up. The two she-cats padded on in silence until Leafstar heard the flutter of wings above her head and caught the scent of thrush. Looking up, she spotted the bird sitting on a low branch in a nearby tree. If I try to climb the tree, it'll see me before I get close. Signaling with her tail for Cora to stay where she was, Leafstar crept through the long grass until she reached the next tree, a beech whose branches interlaced with the ash where the thrush was perching. Bunching her muscles, she jumped and clawed her way up the trunk until she reached a spot where she could look down on her prey. As lightly as she could, imagining she was stalking a mouse. She crept along a branch of the beech tree until she was a tail length above the thrush. Suddenly, the bird realized it was being hunted. As it spread its wings, Leafstar let herself drop down with her front paws outstretched. The thrush tried to fly away, but Leafstar snagged her claws into one of its wings before it was fully spread. The bird fluttered in panic, its free wing beating frantically. Leafstar sprang on top of it and took its life with a bite to the throat. That was impressive, Cora commented as Leafstar leaped down to the ground with her fresh kill in her jaws. 
It's not that hard, Leif star me out. I could teach you if you like, for when you're next on hunting patrol. Thanks, but I don't think it's worth it, Cora replied. What? Shock prickled through Leaf Star's pelt. Are you thinking of leaving? Cora didn't meet her gaze, just lowered her head to give her chest fur a couple of embarrassed licks. She said something she wasn't supposed to, Leaf Star guessed. I, uh, I'm not sure. It's not up to me, Cora mumbled. You're welcome to stay as long as you want, you know, Leaf Star told her impulsively. A little startled at herself, she realized that was true. The newcomers fit well into clan life, and the gorge seemed happier and busier now. Was there, was there some trouble that made you leave your two-leg place? Are you waiting for something to happen before you can go back? Cora blinked, looking almost panic-stricken. Well, we, she began awkwardly, then broke off. Look, a mouse! Leafstar hadn't seen the prey, and wondered for a heartbeat whether Cora had invented it. Then she spotted the little brown creature nibbling on a seed underneath the roots of an oak tree. Cora ran toward it without thinking about whether the mouse would sense her paw steps. The mouse heard the crack as she stepped on a dry twig, so it darted away. But Cora picked up speed and slammed one paw down on it before it could escape. Well done, Leafstar mewed as the visiting she-cat carried her prey back. If I caught an apprentice hunting like that, I'd wonder what his mentor had been teaching him. You might want to watch where you're putting your paws, she added tactfully. Then you won't tread on twigs or dead leaves. And keep your tail still so that you don't brush it against crackly undergrowth. Thanks, Leafstar, Cora panted, dropping the mouse beside Leafstar's thrush. There's so much to remember. Well, you might as well learn it, even if you're not here long enough to hunt in the trees. Leafstar meowed. You never know, the skills might be useful in your two-leg place. I'm sure they will. Cora answered with a warmth in her voice that hadn't been there before. I could be friends with this cat, Leafstar realized. I hope she stays. As she was scratching earth over their prey to hide it until they were ready to collect it, she noticed a squirrel crossing a patch of open ground a few fox lengths farther into the wood. It paused at the foot of an ivy-covered tree and scuffled around in the debris between the roots. Leafstar touched Cora lightly on the shoulder with her tail tip and angled her ears toward the prey. Can we catch it? Cora whispered. It'll climb the tree. Let it, Leafstar murmured. I'm going to climb the tree first. Then you chase the squirrel so it runs straight up into my claws. Cora's eyes shone. Right. Leafstar approached the tree in a wide half circle so that she didn't alert the squirrel. She clawed her way up the trunk on the far side and crouched on a fork in the trunk in the middle of a clump of ivy. The squirrel was still scuffling among the roots below. Leafstar waved her tail to show Cora she was in position. The black she-cat let out a fearsome screech and pelted toward the tree. The squirrel looked up, froze for a moment in terror, then raced up the trunk. Leafstar scrambled out of the concealing ivy, her lips drawn back in a snarl. The squirrel let out a squeal of panic and made for the ground again. But Cora was ready for it. Leafstar watched as the she-cat sprang on the squirrel and raked her claws across its throat. It twitched once and then went limp. Leafstar jumped down to the ground and padded up to Cora, who was standing proudly over her prey. Great catch! It was yours, really, Cora replied. No, it was both of us, Leafstar told her. We worked well together. Cora was even quieter as they returned to camp, laden with fresh kill. Leafstar hoped she was reconsidering what she had said about leaving. I need to find out what's going on. What is it that Stick and his friends want from us? Dropping her prey on the fresh kill pile, Leafstar heard voices raised in anger. She turned and spotted Ebony Claw and her apprentice Frecklepaw standing at the edge of the pool, facing each other with their fur fluffed out and their eyes blazing. Both she-cats were normally so even-tempered that Leafstar padded over to find out what was going on. I don't come to the gorge to sit around grooming my tail while I wait for you, Ebony Claw hissed. You missed a whole training session. I was busy, Frecklepaw retorted. Echo Song needed me to go fetch herbs because Rabbit Kit had a pain in his belly. That's not your responsibility, Ebony Claw lashed her tail. Echo Song isn't your mentor. I wish he was, Frecklepaw flashed back. Before Ebony Claw could reply, Leafstar stepped forward. 
Freckle Paw, you never speak to your mentor like that, she scolded. You need to be respectful to Ebony Claw. Apologize at once. Freckle Paw's eyes widened with dismay as she realized that her clan leader had heard the quarrel. Sorry, Ebony Claw, she muttered. Ebony Claw gave her a curt nod, her neck fur beginning to lie flat again. In the future, Leafstar went on, you must check with Ebony Claw before you do anything for Echo Song. But, Freckle Paw opened her jaws to protest, then clearly thought better of it. All right, Leafstar, I will. Good. Ebony Claw, there's still time for some training before you and Freckle Paw have to go home. Right. Ebony Claw summoned her apprentice with a twitch of her tail and stalked off toward the training area. Freckle Paw followed, her head down and her paws dragging. When the two she cats had gone, Leaf Star headed for Echo Song's den, but the medicine cat emerged before she reached it, meeting her at the entrance. I heard that, Echo Song meowed. I'm sorry, Leaf Star. I didn't know Ebony Claw was waiting for Freckle Paw. That's not the point, Leaf Star began, thinking Echo Song didn't sound all that sorry. You shouldn't give tasks to an apprentice unless you ask her mentor first. But I do think Ebony Claw was too harsh on Freckle Paw. Echo Song went on, as if Leafstar hadn't spoken. Anyone would think she'd done something really wrong. Leafstar bit back an irritated comment. Echo Song clearly wasn't getting it. You have to remember that Frecklepaw is here to be a warrior, she reminded the medicine cat. I thought she was here to be a member of Sky Clan, Echo Song retorted. Leafstar's belly churned with tension. I don't want to quarrel with Echo Song. To her relief, she spotted Sharpclaw returning down the trail with his patrol, stick, shorty, and sparrow pelt. As he saw Leafstar, he called her name and quickened his pace. We'll talk about this again later, Leafstar muttered to Echo Song and bounded off toward her deputy, meeting him at the bottom of the trail. Is everything okay? Fine, Sharpclaw replied. He didn't tell Leafstar where they had been, and they weren't carrying any prey. But they went out to hunt, Leafstar thought uneasily. As Sharpclaw padded closer to her, she caught a whiff of a thunder path, and her pelt prickled. Have they been to the two-leg place? She almost asked Sharpclaw straight out, then shook her head. There was no need to interrogate her deputy. If Sharpclaw had been there, he would tell her. Almost as if he had picked up her thought, Sharpclaw murmured, May I have a word in private? Maybe up there? Without waiting for a reply, he turned back to the trail and started to climb. Leafstar followed, her belly lurching with apprehension. Is he going to tell me about some sort of trouble in the two-leg place? What's all this about? She prompted as they reached the cliff top. Sharpclaw stood looking down into the gorge, his expression thoughtful. It's about the visitors, he meowed. I'd like them to be made full warriors of Sky Clan. Leafstar wasn't surprised by the request. Her deputy had obviously been thinking along those lines for some time now. Is that what they want, she asked. I haven't asked them, Sharpclaw admitted. But they must. They carry out all the warrior duties, and they never talk about leaving. Oh no, Leafstar remembered her conversation with Cora earlier that day. The black she-cat obviously didn't believe that the visitors were going to stay permanently. But what she had said was so vague that Leafstar didn't feel she could tell Sharpclaw about it. Standing beside Sharpclaw and looking down into the camp, Leafstar watched Stick and Cole settle down to eat near the fresh kill pile with sparrow pelt and cherry tail. Shorty was playing some sort of game with the apprentices, trying to jump on one another's tail, while Cora sat outside Echo Song's den talking to the medicine cat. No cat who looked at them would think they were any different from the rest of the clan. I didn't want Cora to tell me they were going to leave, Leafstar remembered. This would be a good way of making them part of Sky Clan for good. You're right, she meowed to Sharpclaw. It's time we honored them by making them warriors. Sharpclaw's eyes glowed with approval. I'm glad you agree. Would you like me to talk to Stick about it? I don't think that's necessary, do you? It's a huge honor we're giving them, and I want the entire clan there to witness it. It might not make them stay, but how else can we thank them? For a moment, Sharpclaw didn't reply, then he gave a brisk nod. Right, when do you want to do it? Leafstar stretched out her front paws and flattened her back, feeling the tension ease from the muscles in her shoulders. I think now would be a good time. With Sharpclaw following her, Leafstar padded down into the gorge. 
Glancing around, she saw Ebony Claw and Frecklepaw returning from their battle training. She was glad to notice that even though their session had been short, they looked more at ease with each other. Petalnose and Sagepaw followed close behind them. Cherrytail, MacGyver, and Patchfoot were getting ready to go on the final border patrol of the day. Echo Song and Cora still sat outside the medicine cat's den. Shorty had joined Stick and Cole near the fresh kill pile. The two elders were sunning themselves beside the river in the last of the sunlight, while Fallow Fern was rounding up her kits, ready to return to the nursery. There was no sign of Billy Storm. Leafstar guessed that he had gone back to the two leg place to check on Snookpaw. Bunching her muscles, Leafstar bounded up to the top of the rock pile. Let all cats old enough to catch their own prey join here beneath the rock pile for a clan meeting. The cats in the gorge looked up at her in surprise. Mintpaw shot out of the apprentice's den and scrambled down to join her fellow apprentices. Shrewtooth popped his head out of the warrior's den, staring wide-eyed, as if he expected to see a horde of attacking badgers charging down the gorge. Waspwhisker followed him out, giving him a shove from behind to get him started down the trail. Rockshade, Bouncefire, and Tiny Cloud all appeared at a run from somewhere downstream. Tiny Cloud had a vole in her jaws, which she tossed onto the fresh kill pile before sitting down with her brothers. Clovertail poked her head out of the new birthing den, but stayed where she was. This is an important time in the life of a clan. The naming of new warriors, Leafstar announced. She saw Mintpaw and Sagepaw give each other a startled look. Then Mintpaw shook her head and shrugged. The apprentices couldn't possibly think it was their turn yet, but clearly no cat expected Leafstar to name the visitors. Stick, Cole, Cora, and Shorty, come forward, please. A murmur of surprise passed through the clan as the four cats padded hesitantly forward to stand below the rock pile. They looked puzzled, but only Cora looked wary, as if she was worried that Leafstar was going to say something about their plans to leave. Leafstar steadied her paws on the warm stone. Though these cats were not born and brought up in a clan, they know the skills they need as warriors, and they are ready to become full members of Sky Clan. She gazed up at the sky, reddening with the streaks of sunset. I, Leafstar, leader of Sky Clan, call upon- Hang on, Stick interrupted. You're making us warriors? There was a gasp from more than one cat behind him. No cat interrupted a warrior ceremony, least of all one of the cats who was being named. Yes, yes, I am, Leafstar stammered, suddenly afraid that he was going to refuse. She gazed down at Stick, trying to read his reaction in his face, but he was completely closed to her. I don't know this cat at all, she realized with something like panic. Catching Sharpclaw's gaze, Leafstar figured her deputy looked as alarmed and unsettled as she felt. You were right. I should have let you talk to Stick first. The visiting cats had drawn together into a huddle, meowing quietly to one another. They kept casting swift glances at Leafstar. Finally, they broke apart and faced her. That's okay, Stick mewed. You can go ahead. He and his companions looked interested and mildly pleased, but they obviously had no idea what the ceremony represented. They're not clan cats, Leafstar realized. This isn't an honor for them. It was too late to back down. Taking a deep breath, Leafstar continued. I call upon my warrior ancestors to look down upon these four cats. In the time they have spent with us, they have come to understand the ways of your noble code, and I commend them to you as warriors. Jumping down to stand in front of them, she meowed, Stick, Cora, Cole, and Shorty, do you promise to uphold the warrior code and to protect and defend this clan, even at the cost of your own lives? I do, all four cats replied. Was Cora a bit hesitant there? Leafstar wondered, or am I imagining things? Then by the powers of Star Clan, I give you your warrior names, she continued. Stick, from this moment, Stick raised his tail. Wait. Yes, Leafstar asked, trying not to sound impatient. That's the second time he's interrupted. They really don't understand what this ceremony means. We'll keep our own names, Stick meowed. Leafstar stared at him. Was this something Star Clan would allow? Even the kitty pet warriors had taken warrior names, more or less. We don't feel the need to change who we are by name, Cole explained. We haven't acted differently by becoming part of the clan. Leafstar could see the point of that, and she spotted Sharpclaw nodding as if he agreed. Very well, she mewed. 
rapidly revising the words with which she would conclude the warrior ceremony. Star Clan honors your courage and skill, and we welcome you as. What's going on? The outraged yowl came from behind Leaf Star. She turned to see Harvey Moon pelting down the gorge from the direction of the training area. He skidded to a halt beside her. Why are you making them warriors? He demanded. Chapter 16 Every cat turned to gaze at the kitty pet. Harvey Moon's eyes were glaring and his fur was fluffed up in anger so that he looked twice his size. Well, why are you? He repeated. I don't know, Sparrow Pelt replied with biting sarcasm. Could it be because they're brave and loyal and good at hunting, or is that just crazy? But they haven't had any proper training, Ebony Claw pointed out. They didn't need any, Patchfoot retorted. Frecklepaw eased herself closer to her mentor, backing her up. I bet they don't even know the warrior code. And what about apprentice tasks? Sagepaw chipped in with a mutinous look on his face. We all have to do them. Leafstar raised her tail for silence. She was furious with Harvey Moon for breaking into the ceremony and disturbed that other cats were backing him up when they had kept their opinions to themselves until now. But with a pang of guilt, she had to admit that there was some truth in what they said. There's no need for fur to be ruffled over this, she meowed. Sharpclaw and I believe that this is the best way to acknowledge all that the visitors have done for Sky Clan. They have learned our skills and taught us skills we never knew before. How could we treat them as apprentices? However, she added, forestalling another protest from Harvey Moon, I'm sure they won't mind helping with the apprentice tasks so that they experience every part of clan life. The visitors glanced at one another, as if they weren't so sure about that. If it's all too much trouble, Cora murmured. This is my decision, Leafstar raised her head and stared out across her clan. No cat was going to bully her out of finishing the ceremony. She felt Sharpclaw's green gaze fixed on her and saw him give her a tiny nod of approval. Stick, Star Clan honors your courage and skill, she went on, and we welcome you as a full member of Sky Clan. She rested her muzzle on Stick's head, and after a moment's hesitation, Stick licked her shoulder and moved back to stand beside Sparrow Pelt. In the same way, Leafstar made the other three two leg place cats full members of Sky Clan. She felt flustered. The ceremony didn't seem right without giving the cats warrior names. Stick, Cora, Cole, Shorty. At the end of the ceremony, some of the Sky Clan cats called out the names of the new warriors, but others, Leafstar noticed, kept silent. Harvey Moon, of course, who had turned his back and refused to watch the ceremony, Ebony Claw and Frecklepaw, MacGyver and Sagepaw. I'll need to keep an eye on them and make sure they don't create trouble. Tiny Cloud was quiet too, Leafstar noticed with a sinking feeling in her belly. And lichen fur, wasp whisker, and clover tail. Great Star Clan, please don't let this split the clan. When the voices had died away, Stick stepped forward again and inclined his head formally to Leafstar. I thank you on behalf of all four of us, he meowed. I'm sure we have much to learn from one another. Yes, I'm sure we do, Leafstar responded. But she still felt uneasy. It hadn't been a proper ceremony. And she was sure there were things about the clan's four newest warriors that were being hidden from her. And I have to say something to Harvey Moon about the way he disrupted the ceremony, she thought, anger still tingling through her pelt. But what? The kitty pet was already on his way out of the gorge, followed by MacGyver, Ebony Claw, and Frecklepaw. They hadn't even waited to say goodbye. The rest of the clan gathered around the fresh kill pile to feast and celebrate the newest warriors. Don't forget you have to keep vigil tonight and guard the camp, Sharpclaw reminded them. Don't worry, Shorty replied. If any rats come, they won't get a whisker past us. Leafstar didn't feel comfortable joining in. She chose a sparrow from the pile picked at it moodily for a few heartbeats, then headed for her den. Are you okay? Echo Song asked as Leafstar padded past her. Fine, Leafstar replied shortly, unable to forget the frost that had formed between them over Frecklepaw's apprenticeship. As she stalked on toward her den, she was aware of the medicine cat's gaze still following her. Leafstar was troubled as she lay down in her den, was it really the destiny of these cats to join Sky Clan? 
Surely we need as many members as possible to grow strong. She remembered the prophecy from the brown tabby Tom she had seen in her dream. Greenleaf will come, but it will bring even greater storms than these. Sky Clan will need deeper roots if it is to survive. And she remembered her other dream, of the terrifying flood that had uprooted the trees in the gorge and swept her cats away to drown helplessly in the torrent. Have I created roots? She asked herself. Or is this just another storm? Worn out with worrying, she closed her eyes and instantly found herself in the flat, grassy area on top of the gorge. The stars of Silverpelt blazed down on her, but barely a twinkle came from the two-legged place. It seemed to be much farther away than usual. Everything was still. There wasn't even a breeze to stir the grass. Movement at the edge of the forest caught Leafstar's eye as a cat emerged from the trees. A pale gray tom with patches of white. Stars twinkled like frost in his fur and around his paws as he paced toward Leafstar. Cloudstar, she whispered. The former Sky Clan leader gazed at her from pale blue eyes that shone like tiny moons. Leafstar, he acknowledged her, dipping his head. It's good to see you here. I'm glad to be here, Cloudstar, Leafstar replied. Do you have a message for me? The starry cat did not reply. Leafstar caught her breath as she saw more cats approaching from every side. She recognized Spotted Leaf and padded up to meet her, drinking in her sweet scent. Greetings, Spotted Leaf, she meowed. The she-cat blinked at her. Leafstar felt strangely calm as the star-furred warriors thronged around her. Except for Spotted Leaf and Cloudstar, none of them seemed to realize that she was there. Instead, they wove among themselves, greeting one another sometimes warily, sometimes with friendly warmth, and occasionally paused to dole out a lick on another cat's ear or to trail their tail tip along a sleek flank. Leafstar watched Cloudstar's mate, Birdflight, touching noses with her two children. And her heart jumped when she spotted Rainfur, the gray tom who had died in the first battle against the rats, on the far side of the crowd. Spotted Leaf stood beside her, so close that their pelts were brushing, and waved her tail toward three cats just padding up to join their clanmates in Star Clan. In the lead was a dignified she cat, her dense blue gray fur shimmering with starlight. Her eyes were the brilliant blue of a clear green leaf sky. Behind her came a graceful white she cat with gray tips to her ears and a powerful white tom. This is Blue Star. Spotted Leaf meowed, angling her ears toward the first cat. She was the leader of ThunderClan when Firestar first came to the forest. Leafstar bowed her head in respect. So this is the cat who made Firestar a warrior. Firestar told me she was a great leader, she murmured. And this is Blue Star's sister, Snowfur, Spotted Leaf continued. And Snowfur's son, Whitestorm. He was once Firestar's deputy. Leafstar blinked, humbled that these warriors would make their way to see her from such distant skies. You are all welcome here, she meowed. A stir in the air behind her made her look around. She felt a shiver run through her pelt, light as a mouse's paws, when she spotted the brown tom who had spoken the prophecy in her dream. The bigger cat, the dark brown tabby tom who had been with him, was beside him, the two cats standing a little way apart as they watched the others assembling. Leafstar wondered if she dared go across and speak to them when she heard a voice behind her. Greetings, Leafstar. She turned to see a handsome gray tom with piercing blue eyes standing in front of her and recognized Skywatcher. Leafstar felt warmed from ears to tail tip to see him looking tall, strong, thick pelted once more. It's good to see you, Skywatcher she purred. Why are you all here? I've seen Star Clan warriors in dreams before, but never so many of you. It's been a long time since Star Clan came together like this, Skywatcher replied. And it's because of you. You and your clanmates who have forged a new clan with the courage and the honor that would make any warrior proud to be a part of it. All five clans have gathered to celebrate Sky Clan's survival. Amazement and disbelief flooded through Leafstar as she gazed at the starlit warriors. We did this? My clan? We won't always be in the same place like this, 
Skywatcher warned, as if he guessed she was about to question what was happening. Our clans are in different places and the skies are not always open to us, so let us enjoy the moment while we can. Yes, oh yes, Leafstar breathed out, feeling that happiness was about to well up inside her and spill over like rain from an upturned leaf. She felt as if she could stand there forever, basking in the whispering starlit warmth. Let's hunt, one cat yowled. Immediately, the cats of Star Clan gathered and shifted like a shoal of glittering fish before flowing smoothly toward the forest, their belly fur brushing the grass and their tails streaming out behind them. Leafstar was swept along with them. Energy crackled through her like a bolt of lightning. There's nothing better than this, being among warriors, running through the trees, searching for prey. She basked in the strength and speed and skill she could feel sparking in her legs. She had lost sight of the cat who had made the prophecy, and his clanmate. But Spotted Leaf raced briefly at her side. Seize the moment, she urged. The glow in her eyes told Leaf Star that the words had special meaning for her. Destiny will arrive, whether we seek for it or not. Leaf Star felt comforted, the worries of her waking life melting away like icicles in the sun. These cats seemed to be telling her to celebrate being part of the clan as it was now, that the future was hidden and they must live in the present. But she wished she had been able to talk to the cat she had dreamed of at the bottom of the gorge. Skywatcher and Spotted Leaf said nothing about storms lying ahead. Does that mean the storm will never come? Leafstar wasn't ready to discount the prophecy, yet the visit tonight had reassured her. She knew that her clan had to be prepared with training and battle practice, but that was all they could do. As her paws flew over the shining grass of the dream forest, Leafstar knew she must not try to see the future that was hidden from her. Chapter 17 Paw steps on the rock outside her den woke Leafstar. Blinking in the sunlight, she made out Billy Storm's head and shoulders as he looked in. Anxiety flooded through her as she realized how late she had slept. I'm sorry, Leafstar, Billy Storm exclaimed, his forepaws scrabbling at the floor of the den in embarrassment. I didn't realize you were still asleep. It's okay, Leafstar mumbled around a huge yawn. She sat up, wincing at the ache in her muscles. Any cat would think I had been racing through the forest all last night. Come in. She felt as embarrassed as Billy Storm as she shook moss out of her pelt and tried to give herself a quick grooming. What can I do for you? She asked. I'm worried about Snookball, Billy Storm meowed, sitting in the entrance to the den. He's still shut up in his house folks' nest. I'd like to make sure that he's okay and that they're not keeping him there against his will. Every hair on Leafstar's pelt prickled, and she stopped washing to face the daylight warrior. That's not good, she commented. You're right, you should do everything you can to find out what's going on. Billy Storm looked down, examining his paws. Actually, I was hoping you would come with me. Leafstar's heart began to beat faster with a mixture of excitement and apprehension. I don't belong in the two-leg place. I'd look after you, Billy Storm assured her. And I know exactly where we're going. Leafstar, you're being a fox heart, Leafstar told herself, remembering her dream of the night before. The joy she had felt then in being a cat, the energy that had flowed through her body as she hunted with the warriors of Star Clan gave courage to her heart and paws. All right, she mewed. I'll come. I'll just let Sharpclaw know. Down in the gorge, Sharpclaw was organizing the hunting patrols. Shorty, you lead this one with Patchfoot, Petalnose, and Sagepaw, you ordered. Stick, you can lead the other. Take Ebony Claw, Frecklepaw, and Cherrytail. Leafstar couldn't help noticing that Ebony Claw flicked her tail with annoyance as she fell in behind Stick, while Sagepaw padded up to his mother and muttered into her ear, I don't want to take orders from him, with a glare at Shorty. Star Clan, please let them get used to it in a few days. Sharpclaw blinked in surprise when Leafstar told him she was going to the two-leg place with Billy Storm. You'll need to take care, he meowed. And listen, about Billy Storm. What? Leafstar interrupted sharply. Sharpclaw hesitated, then gave his fur a shake. Nothing. Don't worry, Leafstar. I'll look after everything here. 
Leafstar watched him closely to see if he gave any flicker of knowing more about Two Leg Place than he should. She hadn't forgotten about Billy Storm's accusation of Sharp Claw's secret night patrols. But her deputy's gaze showed nothing but concern for her and confidence that he could take care of the clan while she was gone. With a sigh, Leaf Star pushed Billy Storm's report to the back of her mind. He was the very last cat she could imagine lying to her, but she couldn't believe that Sharp Claw would keep anything from her that threatened the safety of their clan. A stiff breeze was blowing, flattening the grass as Leaf Star rejoined Billy Storm, and they climbed to the top of the gorge. The sun shone brightly from a clear blue sky with only a few wisps of cloud. Leaf Star was cast back into her dream, and the starlit cats who had surrounded her the night before seemed to be there once more, scenting the air with the history of countless moons. The memory was so vivid that she was surprised to realize that only Billy Storm was running beside her. He slowed down as they crossed the border and drew closer to Two Leg Place. We'll have to cross the Thunderpath soon, he told her. They can be pretty scary, but it should be quiet at this time of day. And just beyond that, there's a two-leg nest with a dog that barks its stupid head off every time I go past. But you don't need to worry. It can't get at us. Then there's another thunder path, and after that, we have to crawl underneath some really thick shrubs. I'm sure we'll be fine, Billy Storm, Leafstar interrupted. But her confidence began to ebb away as they crossed the thunder path, with anxious glances at a sleeping monster a few fox lengths away. What if it wakes up, she wondered ready to flee if it let out a roar and leaped toward her. Billy Storm led her along a fence. She could smell the dog on the other side, and her heart thumped at the sound of its high-pitched yapping. But Billy Storm was right. The dog scrabbled frantically against the fence, but it couldn't get through to attack them. They crossed the second thunder path. The black surface felt sticky under Leaf Star's paws, and she wrinkled her nose at the acrid scent. Then she followed Billy Storm through a gap in a fence and emerged in a tangle of thick bushes. They squirmed underneath the lowest branches, their belly fur brushing the soft, moist earth. Billy Storm raised a paw to halt Leaf Star as they emerged from the shrubs. A stretch of smooth, two-legged grass separated them from the nest. On the far side, a couple of two-legged kits were tossing something round and brightly colored between them, squealing happily as they jumped up to catch it. What are they doing? Leafstar whispered. Billy Storm shrugged. They call that thing a ball. I think it's for some sort of apprentice training exercise. Sometimes my house folk throw one for me to chase. And do you chase it? Leafstar asked. Billy Storm gave his chest for a couple of embarrassed licks. It's good fun, actually. And it's practice for hunting. Leafstar purred, amused. Billy Storm led her across the grass at a swift trot in the shade of the bushes so that the two-legged kits didn't spot them. We have to be careful now, he warned Leaf Star as they approached the next fence. There's a dog through here, and the two legs let it roam loose. Leaf Star felt her pelt prickle and her neck fur begin to rise. She wanted to ask, do we have to go this way? But she was afraid that Billy Storm would think she was a coward. I'm his clan leader, he has to respect me. Right. Lead on, she mewed tensely. Billy Storm crept along the fence until he came to a spot where the wooden boards had rotted away at the bottom. He squeezed underneath, then poked his head back through the hole. It's okay, he whispered, but keep quiet. Leafstar pushed herself through the gap, feeling the bottom of the rotting wood scrape her back. She rose to her paws among more shrubs with dark leaves and huge, sweet-smelling flowers. The scent should hide us from the dog. Billy Storm explained. As she followed him through the bushes, Leaf Star caught glimpses of the dog between the branches, a huge creature with shaggy black and brown hair and floppy ears. It was lying on a stretch of stone near the door of the two-leg nest, separated from the cats by a stretch of grass. Its nose lay on its paws, and it looked as if it was asleep. As she and Billy Storm started along the second side of the enclosure, Leaf Star began to relax though she kept casting cautious glances at the dog. But the heavy scent of the flowers was tickling her nostrils, and before she and her clanmate could reach the safety of the far fence, she let out an enormous sneeze. Instantly, the dog sprang to its paws and hurled itself across the grass with a series of deep-throated barks. Run, Billy Storm yowled, shoving Leaf Star in front of him. Leaf Star raced through the bushes, imagining she could hear the dog panting behind her and feel its hot breath on her fur. Its rank smell swamped everything, even the heavy scent of the flowers. 
With Billy Storm hard on her paws, she crashed between two shrubs at the foot of the fence and clawed her way to the top. Billy Storm sprang up beside her as she crouched there, shivering. Below them, the dog was standing on its hind paws, with its forepaws halfway up the fence, and its tongue lolled as it barked. Shove off, leave pelt, Billy Storm hissed. Go and chase beetles. He didn't seem frightened, just annoyed. Turning his back on the dog, he led the way along the top of the fence. Leafstar began to follow him, only to freeze again as another flurry of barking broke out from the next two-leg den. It's okay, Billy Storm meowed, glancing back. This dog is usually shut in the house. Usually isn't always, Leafstar muttered as she forced her paws to move again. They had crept several fox lengths along the fence when Leafstar heard a rattling noise. Her belly fluttered as a small door in the big two-leg door swung open, but no dog appeared. Instead, a dark tabby tom slid through the opening. He brought with him a waft of familiar scent, and there was a distinctive shape to his pricked ears. Short whisker, Leafstar gasped. No, sorry, I mean, Hutch. She leaped down from the fence and bounded across the garden to touch noses with the dark tabby. Billy Storm followed more slowly. You two know each other? He asked, looking stunned. Oh, yes, Leafstar replied. Hutch used to belong to Sky Clan back in the early days when Firestar was with us. But he decided that being a kitty pet suited him better. The life of a warrior wasn't for me. Hutch declared quite cheerfully. It's good to see you again, Leafstar. The clan must be doing well. You look almost as well-fed as me. He paused, looking Billy Storm over from ears to tail tip. What do you want, trespassing on my territory? He's with me, Leafstar meowed. He's my clanmate. Hutch looked puzzled. But I've seen him around here before. Isn't he a kitty pet? Er, uh, I'm sort of both, Billy Storm admitted giving his shoulder a couple of embarrassed licks. Both? Can't you make up your mind? Hutch asked with a disdainful sniff. There are several cats like that in Sky Clan now, Leafstar put in. They come to the gorge for training and hunting and then go back to their housefolk at night. She hesitated and then added, you could do that if you want to, Hutch. You could be short whisker again. For a heartbeat, she thought that Hutch might agree. Then he shook his head. I'm sorry, Leafstar. I like my life as it is. But it's still great to see you, he added warmly. I'm glad Sky Clan is still there. Always, Leafstar promised, hoping that it was true. Hutch turned his head at the sound of a two-leg voice calling from the nest. I'd better go, he went on with a touch of wistfulness. Goodbye, Leafstar. Say hi to all my old clanmates for me. I will. Leafstar touched noses with Hutch again before he bounded back across the garden and into the two-leg den. I wonder if I should have tried harder to persuade him to be a daylight warrior, she wondered as she followed Billy Storm back onto the fence. He has skills we could use, learned from Firestar and Sandstorm. Maybe Sagepaw and Ebony Claw would be more willing to take orders from him than the other two-leg place cats. Billy Storm led her down from the fence, across an alley, and through a half-open gate into yet another enclosed square of grass. This is where Snookball lives, he announced. To Leafstar, the two-leg nest looked exactly like all the others they had passed. How do you know, she asked. The blue pot's over there, Billy Storm replied, pointing with his tail to some round, shiny things near the nest door. The scent of the herbs by the fence, and the little birch tree in the middle of the grass. Okay, if you're sure. Leafstar narrowed her eyes. The tree was a spindly thing trapped in a circle of earth in the middle of a patch of grass. It's not a proper forest tree. She tasted the air for Snookpaw's scent, but there was such a mingled smell of two legs and monsters that she couldn't pick up any trace of it. He must still be shut in. He certainly hasn't been out here recently. She and Billy Storm crept closer to the nest until they could hide behind a big green object with round paws. Leafstar wrinkled her nose at the rotting scent of two-leg rubbish that came from it. Snookpaw, Billy Storm let out a low wail. Snookpaw, we're here, come out. Leafstar joined her voice to his, but there was no sign of the apprentice. Every hair on her pelt prickled with fear. Have the two legs taken him away? She was almost ready to give up when she spotted a small black and white head pop up inside one of the windows. There he is. Billy Storm yowled. 
Their pelts brushing, the two cats raced up to the window and jumped onto the narrow ledge outside it. Snookpaw pressed his nose against the shiny stuff that filled the window space. Leafstar thought he looked thin and sorry for himself. Snookpaw, are you okay? She meowed. I'll be fine, Snookpaw replied, his voice faint because of the shiny stuff in the way. Leafstar, I can't believe you came here. I can't believe it either. We can't talk to him like this, Billy Storm muttered with an annoyed flick of his tail. Leafstar, do you think you could get in through there? He angled his ears toward a tiny open window at the top of the big closed one. Go inside a two-leg nest? I didn't plan on that. What about the two legs, she asked. They won't want strange cats inside their den. They've gone out, Snookpaw told her, stretching up to press his forepaws against the window. Why don't you come in? I'm lonely all on my own here. Leafstar was still reluctant, but she wouldn't let her nervousness show in front of her clanmates. It'll be a tight squeeze, she replied, eyeing the gap doubtfully. But I'll give it a try. A vine was growing up the side of the window. Leafstar used the tough stem to claw her way up. Scrabbling with her hind paws, she forced her way through the narrow gap and plopped down onto the floor of the two-leg nest. Billy Storm dropped down beside her a couple of heartbeats later. The floor felt cold and unwelcoming under paw, and the air was filled with unfamiliar scents. There was a faint buzzing noise in the air. Huge, shiny objects lined the walls of the den. Leafstar thought they were gazing at her in the dim light, waiting for the right moment to pounce. Every hair on Leafstar's pelt began to rise. There was too much to take in at once, and all her muscles were shrieking at her to flee. Taking a few deep breaths, she made herself stand her ground. What's going on, Snookpaw? She hissed. Snookpaw didn't reply right away. Come this way, he mewed, waving his tail. It's better through here. Keeping low, Billy Storm and Leafstar crept through an open door into a different part of the den. Here, the floor was covered with something like grass, but it was short and much softer, and made up of different bright colors. Weird, Leafstar muttered, flexing her claws in it. This area was filled with what looked like squashy boulders in the same bright colors. Remembering the pile of two-leg waste, Leafstar recognized what Snookpaw had called a sofa. She watched as the apprentice sprang up onto it and settled down. It looked comfortable. But Leafstar decided not to join him, preferring to stay on her paws with one eye on her escape route. We've missed you, Snookpaw, she meowed. Her voice sounded strange in the enclosed space, muffled by the fuzzy floor and the sofas. Why haven't you been back to the gorge? Snookpaw looked at his paws and gave one of them a lick. I had a pain in my chest. My housefolk took me to the medicine two-leg, and he gave me some sort of weird food to eat. Things like white seeds, and they taste foul. You would be better off with herbs from Echo Song, Leafstar told him. I'll bring you some if you like. No, thanks, Leafstar, Snookpaw shook his head. I'm feeling better now. Besides, my housefolk hardly ever leave me alone. This is the first time I've been on my own since I came back from the gorge, so you probably won't be able to get in here again. He heaved a deep sigh. I really miss being in the clan. Gloomily, he stared out of the window. Following his gaze, Leafstar could see nothing but a small patch of sky and a two-leg fence. He can't see any real trees, she realized, sharing his pain. She felt trapped and hot and couldn't figure how any cat could stand being inside here all day and all night without even the chance to feel earth beneath their paws. While Leafstar had been talking to Snookpaw, Billy Storm had been patting around the den, poking his nose into corners and giving everything a good sniff. Leafstar wondered how he had the confidence. She had a hard time not freezing into a crouch with her eyes closed, trying to shut out the stifling sights and smells. This nest isn't too bad, Billy Storm meowed, returning from his explorations. I hope your housefolk gave you a comfortable place to sleep. I'll show you, Snookpaw invited, jumping down from the sofa. Waving his tail, he led them back into the first area and pointed to a small squashy boulder in one corner. Its bright surface was covered in Snookpaw's fur and heavy with his scent. That looks nice, Leafstar murmured politely, though privately she thought the moss and bracken of the dens in the gorge was much better for sleeping. And there's my food bowl, Snookpaw added, 
twitching his whiskers toward a brightly colored two-legged thing half full of small brown pellets. They feed you rabbit droppings? Leafstar gasped. Do they want you to get sick? No, that's a special sort of two-leg food for kitty pets, Billy Storm explained. His eyes glimmered with amusement, and he gave Leafstar an affectionate nudge with his shoulder. Try one. Leafstar shot him a doubtful look. The last thing she wanted was to put one of the shriveled brown things into her mouth, but it would be cowardly to refuse. She batted up to the bowl and sniffed. Yuck. Delicately, she picked up a single pellet and rolled it around on her tongue. The den was so full of harsh smells that she couldn't really taste anything. Just as well, she thought, if it tastes anything like it looks. Just then, Leafstar heard the sound of a monster, growing rapidly louder and then cutting off abruptly. Alarm sprang into Snookpaw's eyes, and his fur bristled. My two legs, they're back! Leafstar gulped down the pellet, almost choking. We've got to get out of here, she rasped. Even while she was speaking, she heard a harsh clicking sound and footsteps just beyond the den wall. For a few heartbeats, her terror paralyzed her. I'll delay them! You climb out, quick! Snookpaw mewed. With a whisk of his tail, he vanished through another door. Billy Storm was already streaking across to the window and leaped up to the opening in one massive bound. Come on, he urged Leafstar, balancing precariously. I'll pull you up. Leafstar bunched her muscles and put all her strength into her jump. She felt her front paws land on the edge of the window and slid out her claws to grip. Billy Storm's teeth met in her scruff. At the same moment, she heard Snookpaw somewhere out of sight, his voice raised in loud mewing. Oh, I've missed you. Where did you go? Stroke my ears. I'm feeling better now. Billy Storm dragged Leafstar through the open window, and both cats tumbled onto the stony path outside the nest in a tangle of legs and tails. A last yowl came from Snookpaw. Run! Leafstar didn't need telling twice. With Billy Storm beside her, she raced across the garden and out through the half-open gate. Just get us back to the gorge, she panted to Billy Storm, and added silently to herself, I'll chew my own tail off before I come here again. <laughs>